Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to episode number 51 in our Oxygen Not Included Redux series. I've been doing some testing here on our new petroleum boiler, and everything work is working great. Petroleum's flowing out, but right now the petroleum has stopped flowing out because I have this set up with a priority to take the petroleum coming from our basement structure. So I've also cut off our oil flow here. And finally, the thing I did is I cut off flow of oil to this boiler as well. So we're not boiling any petroleum right now. We have a little bit left to go through that's going to get boiled out. And it'll be the last we pump into here. The reason I did that is because I have a lot of petroleum in here. And I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of every little bit of it. And we're going to pump it up to the top so that we can... We're going to leave this structure here for now because I'm not 100% convinced that my thinking here is going to work. And so we may need to do some more work up here. And I want to be able to continue making petroleum if that's the case so I can reroute everything. But once we get this tank at the bottom emptied out, we can reroute the oil back through so that it will continue to pump into our new boiler, which will use up some of that heat and that'll be fine. We're not using up any of this at the moment, so that's, that's another reason that I want to leave this here. I do want to use up all of the heat in this magma biome eventually so that I can remove it. And to do that, we're going to need to keep drawing heat out of it. But getting this tank empty is priority number one, and then we'll go from there. Um, what we're going to work on today is reconstructing this boiler up here in the space that we have for it. So I left extra room as opposed to this one because I knew it was going to take a little bit more space, but we want to make it as condensed as possible. We want it to use the same heat source. Um, in theory, you would think that we could just mirror this, this boiler over. The problem is that this boiler is different than the boiler we're going to be making for water. There's a couple of key differences. One, this boiler has one liquid that comes in, it is handled, and it's turned into another liquid, which is then processed out. Number two is that this system only handles liquid. Everything in it is always liquid. The crude oil turns into a liquid petroleum, which is then run through the heat exchanger. If we look at our system down here, it's slightly different, similar, but it's slightly different. And so that's why we have some things that are different in this chamber that we designed here. This is a system that we have a liquid in here that is kept at temperature so that when any of the liquids we're processing gets put into it, fall down into here, they boil instantly. That's the idea. That's why we keep the temperature here at 154. So if water, polluted water, or salt water get dumped in here, it's high enough temperature that it, they will instantly boil off. And so this system here is one where the liquid is dropped up here above this mesh tile and through some quirks of the mechanics, this, is, this acts, actually acts as a pump. So the gas coming up from the boiling of the liquids, the steam, then goes up and it pumps the liquid down in. So if we let it run, you can see how there's a bead of liquid running down. It's actually drawing the liquid out of that mesh tile and forcing it down. So this has to be in it. This has to be in it. We can condense this down if we get since we're going to have a vacuum We're not going to have gases we need to deal with and we won't need our dupes to go in there to do any Changes, but we do also need this chamber here. It's very important. So Unlike the petroleum one where the heat exchanger just stops at it when it gets to the point where it's about to turn into petroleum, that way when we drop off the oil, it turns into petroleum very quickly. This one has a heat exchanger. It's a little different. This is heating the water up. So let's see. This is our... Oh, no. This is using a system where we're cooling down the water using this steam system. So we have a cooling loop that is keeping this water cold. 
And so what happens is the fluids are dropped in here. They come out of steam. This loop stays super cooled. And so then as the steam comes across and hits this pipe, it condensates into water. And then the water comes down here. This water also, if we look at the water here at 41 degrees, it is... Um, Actually, let's look at this side because this is where it's mostly hot. The water here is in the 70 degrees. So we have water 74 degrees, 70 degrees. It gets down to here. It's it's about 50. On this level, it is cooler. This level, it gets even cooler than that. And then this level, it gets down to our goal of 15 degrees. And so that way, when we're pumping water out, it's already cool. And that's what this whole system is about. So these two work in concert with each other. We have a system here that is just a monster at destroying heat. And so it's pulling all the heat out of this steam as it's being made and turning it into cold water. And so it's like a cold water boiler. We dump in uh, water from different sources at all kinds of temperatures because we have 94 degree salt water. We have 35 degree polluted water. We have all kinds of different things coming in, but we have an even temperature water pumping out. And that's what we want. So our goal is to rebuild this in a slightly condensed format, but we're gonna need this system to be there. We're gonna need this system to be there. And this one we can condense down a little bit. It's gonna take some, some figuring out of things. I also have had some issues with uh, different waters making it out through here so i think i'm going to make some changes to this to try to determine if i can fix that and uh it's going to take some design work to do that but hopefully when we're done we will have a system up here at the top that can do the same thing that fits in this area and runs off of a cooling system that fits into this area so that we can have a system here where we dump in water polluted water salt water anything we want as far along as the water types and we get cold water back out of the system and it uses renewable magma source first thing i did here is i made just a tiny change i put a tile up one block higher above our vent i think that that'll prevent i don't know where exactly the polluted water that was building up here was coming from but i have a feeling it was somehow um some kind of diagonal thing where it was coming out and it was landing here because it had nowhere else to go. So raising it up means I shouldn't get that there. I removed the, bub the bubble of polluted water here. And so now the system is running a little better. I want to go in here and get rid of the oxygen and start changing this system into one that runs with a smaller um, heat exchanger, like a, a one that's not double all for the duplicates to walk in through but doing that while it's running is an issue the first thing i'm going to do working on this system is actually not anything to do with this system at all i'm going to come up here to our liquid storage area and right now i just store water in a big tank and then i have some overflow tanks with filters so that if i get any other liquids coming from other sources mostly off planet or wherever where i spill some they get dropped off into tanks what I want to do is set up a system in this area that is going to have infinite liquid storage for all the different liquid types. So I need to take a minute, go through and figure out all the different types of liquid that I'm going to handle, um, make a list of those, and then figure out exactly how I want to orient that up here. But I think I want to have it like right here next to the other side of the power, just to kind of mirror our gas storage. And so we're going to do that. I'll probably build it off camera. You've seen me build this. It's not a complicated system. Uh, it's just a matter of building it, and we'll get it set up up here, and we'll go from there. I had a small issue. Somehow I got polluted oxygen out into my main chamber here, and uh, I don't know when it happened. might have been there for a while. It might have just been something I just broke while I was messing around. But I'm pumping it back out, and it'll get things back to normal. It's heating up all my things, which is not good, but they'll be okay. They'll survive. It did get me thinking. Um, I was looking in here, and I had condensed the polluted oxygen up here when I added this spot. So basically this spot uh, 
prevented any more gas from escaping. And so what little gas was in here got kind of compressed into the corner and was getting deleted because of the um, pressures. So when I cut off water going into the system, which made it so that this system was no longer producing steam and the steam all condensed, it tried to spread out because it was a very small amount of polluted oxygen and it just kind of fell apart. I'm trying to do the same down here. I took this tile away. I'm down to like 15 milligrams of polluted oxygen here. I don't know if it's going to work the way I want it, but I'm going to let it spread out at the very least. And then if I fire this back up, the steam should push all of it into one corner and push this back down to the bottom to separate it. And then when I do it again, it, sh it may delete it. So I don't need to worry about pumping it out. My other alternative is if this spreads out to the point up here where it fills in this whole room, I can put a pump in here really easily, pump out this little bit of polluted oxygen so that this system is a vacuum again, which is what I want, so that the only thing I'm dealing with in here is water and steam, because that will make it a lot easier when I am working in here to <clears throat> experiment with condensing this whole structure down. And this system here, when water's flowing in, we may end up with a problem with the steam lock not working if was while it's stopped, but that shouldn't be an issue because no fluid's going in. But we get polluted oxygen that gets created in this side, but it gets um, it doesn't can't get through because of the steam and the water. I'm almost convinced that maybe that's where my polluted oxygen made it into it here. So what I think I'm gonna do put a oops that's the wrong key. I'm going to put a obsidian tile right here. Um, I think, I, I don't know how it would, but I was thinking maybe some polluted oxygen got created in here and it got diagonally ejected and that's how it came out here. I don't know. I don't know where it could have come from. So just trying to tidy up all the things. Uh, this should be okay. Uh, this is also made of obsidian and it doesn't heat up. We'll see. It's, this is all about testing to try to find the correct way to do things now. Who's scalding? Oh, why, why are you over here? Oh, you're grabbing obsidian to do the job. Okay, that's fine. I'm also... I dug out an area here and I'm sweeping out all these rocks because I want to open this up and let this magma flow down so that we can... Oh, he's incapacitated. It's the other Harrison... Just to expedite the process of him getting up here. Assign him so somebody goes and grabs him right away. He has 107 seconds. It takes about 50 seconds to get from here to the top. So as long as somebody comes and gets him quick, we should be fine. Somebody's headed down now, I think. Oh, nope, he was just grabbing rocks while his friend is laying there dying. That was really nice of him. Uh, you too, Tyler. I guess somebody is on their way because they're not grabbing him, but there we go. 72 seconds, that's plenty of time to get up there. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so... Oh, the, it looks like the polluted oxygen did make its way across, which caused some steam to make it happen. All right, well, we're going to let this go, and we'll get all this polluted oxygen out. I'm still working on building my storage up here. I think the next one I'm going to build is, and I started to do it, is the crude oil. I'm going to put that up here and store that up here as well, just for the long term, because in the long term, I'm going to just pump crude oil up and keep everything up here. We're not going to have any processing down here eventually, so I might as well start getting rid of these oil reservoirs and instead have the oil get pumped from here into our oil system. I'm just going to make some changes here. So that's probably what I'm going to focus on now while this gets finished, because this is going to take a long time to get all this gas fixed up. I have been making some progress on our prep work. First of all, we got our petroleum almost down. One thing I did do is I changed some settings on our speed control mod. So now I have regular speed, five speed, 
and 30 speed so that I can super accelerate the times when I am just waiting on things to get done. The petroleum is almost emptied out of here, which means I can start running more petroleum. I just wanted to get this empty before I start processing any more oil. Um, the boiler on this side, the water boiler, I had turned off because I was trying to get the gas out. I got most of it out. I still need some more time to get the rest out. But I had to turn the boiler back on. And the reason for that is that up here at our base, the water line that was connected to our toilets, that is our sewer line, goes up here and it goes into this line. And this line backed all the way up down to that boiler so that it was um, stopping water from coming out of the toilets, which meant I was about to have a big problem. So I started processing water again just to get this line emptied. It's pulling out the excess water out of here as well. So it's going to take a little while. Um, we will get, after we finish this, system here for the crude oil the next one we'll do is the polluted water that way we can just instead of piping that water into all the way around that loop all the way down to that and we can just pump it into some storage and we'll get that sent out to water processing when we get our new water boiler set up this has been taking a long time because we had a lot of piping in this area and I decided I wanted the crude oil right next to petroleum. And so it's just meant redirecting a lot of pipes. So we have been doing the long process of connecting pipes to new places and then removing the old pipes. This line here used to be the flow for polluted water down to our base to use for our crops. And I have Re moved it moved that over to this side so that's done so we'll get that deconstructed uh th this line is the water coming down into our toilets this is the line that going up to our water storage tank um once we get all this infinite storage is set up a lot of these will be shorter and easier to manage because we'll be connecting them right in this area i decided i think i'm going to do um water storage right in this area here just because it's very convenient to where i want to want to process it both for the crude oil into the into the petroleum boiler and then the other liquids into our um water boiler it's all very convenient right in this area instead of up here plus that means i don't have to empty this tank i can build it down here and then i can empty this tank into it which will just make our life a lot easier. One th other thing I need to figure out is that I currently have several different lines coming out from water here going to different places. I need to check to make sure I'm going to have enough pumps in my water storage. So I might have to make the water uh, infinite storage a little bit bigger than these other ones. The rest of them, I think having two pumps that are connected together so that I can get a full line coming out will be more than enough. But uh, I might have to make the water one a little bigger with some extra pumps in it. But we'll figure that out before we move the water tank. That'll be the last one that we do. So we're still working on getting all these piping moved. We'll move some of the ladder and the power lines too. And then we're gonna finish up this crude oil tank. It's actually almost ready now. The main thing we're doing next for that is I have this crude oil line. Instead of going this way, it is now coming up this way to go with all the other water or other fluid lines that come up from the bottom of the map. And so we have it built up to this point. We're still building the rest of this. It's skidding there, but it's not quite done. And we'll have to run it across and then have this line come down through here into our crude oil storage. And then, of course, we'll have to have the line that comes down from this and goes over to the input on our boiler. So a lot of things to still do. We'll let them keep working while we are processing things down here. 
getting the petroleum empty and getting the gases in here fixed so we can start doing some more testing with our system. I was distracted by the work we were doing on our new tanks up here, and I didn't notice a pretty serious problem that happened down here. I'm in the process of trying to fix it. So I'm going to show you what's going on. The <coughs> rock and stuff that I was sweeping up put, got, that got put in here, uh, and I knew that it was going to happen. I forgot, just forgot to deal with it. it, was being dropped in, and it was heating up this area to the point where the water that was in here um, turned into steam. It went all over the place. I have some down here that I'm still dealing on cleaning up, but mostly it built up in a big puddle down here, which created a situation where this vent became an infinite vent, so gas kept coming out. So now this whole area got overpressurized. It's balancing out now. We're back down to 3,000, so things are okay, but that caused a lot of stress for our people. Uh because they had popped eardrums and they couldn't get to food and they couldn't get, you know, all kinds of problems. We're getting them cleaned up. I made a mesh tile here. So liquid, if, that, if it happens again, liquid can get out. Um, I'm putting one here so I can get some of this liquid to flow out of here. So I'm able to mop it up in my refrigerator room. The big thing I did is I put more liquid back in here to prevent off gassing, but I use super coolant this time, which has a much higher temperature range meaning that I can drop stuff in there and it won't be such a big deal, but I also don't want hot items in there to cause heat issues. So what I did is I extended our coolant loop down. So now we have 20 degree coolant coming through and it's going out at 35 degrees. It'll balance out in here eventually. But if we look at our temperatures, this is still hot, but it's cooling down. It was well over 100 degrees. The super coolant still is over 100 degrees, but it'll cool down. And uh, it'll all balance out in the end. Um, we were starting to have overheating damage on buildings and stuff in here. That's what alerted me to it. Otherwise, probably still wouldn't have noticed. So we just have to get all these uh, liquid issues here cleaned up a little bit and get everything back to normal. I did have been looking around and I realized that like everything in here is kind of uh, still not the best. Like I have, it was cool when I built this space. It was pretty uh, neat to jam everything in, but I have a lot more technology now and I could probably do something better. So pretty soon that's probably gonna be something I work on is getting uh, a new base set up. Um, I kind of would like to relocate everything anyway. Uh, that's going to be a really big project, though, so it's not going to happen today. Uh, we're just going to get everything back to functional here. As far as this goes, I did get all our plumbing finished here. So the sewer line comes over this way. The line coming down for our crops is here. The line coming in to send water to our bathrooms is here. And we were able to get rid of all of these. We're getting them deconstructed. This line is my crude oil input line. And I want, if I come down here, we can see it has stopped. Crude oil has stopped here. I still have this to build and this to build. And then there's some up top. Uh, looks like this is almost finished. And then we'll be able to bring crude oil over to our tank, which means we can start running it through the boiler again. Um, I think that we are done. Emptying out of petroleum, we are. So if I do, let's do a mop here. I also want to prioritize doing this. This, I'm gonna put a bottle emptier here and then I'm gonna put a tile behind it, just temporary, so that I can empty petroleum here. That way all this stuff, when I mop it up, I can drop it into these. And then I can dismantle this. This line is for petroleum to flow out of this boiler directly through the line into the line that goes up to our petroleum tank um, so that we can continue to use this boiler now that this tank is being decommissioned so a little bit more work to do with that but I want to prioritize getting this tank finished after we finish the crude oil tank we're going to make a polluted water tank and then we'll go from there got the crude oil tank working and everything is going well with that and I also connected it to our new boiler so that we are producing petroleum again. 
which is going up into our petroleum tank. The next thing I need to do is I'm going to put two more tanks underneath. One for polluted water. I'm not sure quite yet for the other one, but I'm gonna. That's where I'm gonna fit them, and then I'll probably put two more next to them here. But we have a power line running right through here that goes over to our main power grid to bring power over to this section. Um, I could probably remove it because none of this stuff is super necessary. I guess I do need this running in order to keep our sleep sleep wheat growing but we don't need to tap into the power from the steam turbine but what i decided to do is i'm going to have steam turbines here anyway so i just built the starter part of our coolant system up above just to lay it out so i knew where it was and we're going to have that line run right through there because we're going to need it there anyway so we're building that across and then we'll be able to remove the power line up here at the top and build our next tank, which will be to collect our polluted water all together in one spot. So it's been about 100 cycles, a little more since I last checked in. I have had this minor issue here turn into a much more serious one, and I'm working on fixing that so i thought i would show you what i'm doing so the issue is is that the temperature here reached the point where it is so hot that <clears throat> some uranium that was in here melted so now i have liquid uranium all over the place uh i have some other liquids from that as well it's causing problems uh it's causing a lot of heat issues so we really need to get it fixed my first attempt to fix it was I ran some piping from our main coolant loop for the base down here to try to pull off some of that heat, thinking that it would get dropped into here and it would cool off. Didn't work the way I hoped. This it heated the whole loop up well over 40 degrees. So I have disconnected that and I am emptying all that fluid out of that pipe back in. I'm going to disconnect it here now. And what I'm doing is I am running some new pipes from another uh, coolant system. That'll get emptied out, so that'll be good. Up here, I have this one that I had disconnected that was originally there to cool our water. Um, as I'm switching over to a different water tank, I was redesigning it. It is just sitting here idle. It's still keeping the line cool at 13 degrees. And so I'm running a new line that comes from there down to here, and I'm gonna have it just cool this section here, just these two pieces, which means it'll be a lot of cool, a lot of coolant all at once. And hopefully it'll lower us down to the point where this place is manageable and we're not causing serious harm to our uh, duplicates in their base. So we need to get all these pipes finished, get them all insulated, so that they're ready to go and connect it and then hopefully that'll get this cooled down right now we have all kinds of overheat damage going on in here which is causing things like uh these natural tiles to build up because of things converting into solid dirt things like that so we're gonna get this built and see if we can't get this fixed Okay, well, when it rains, it pours. I just got a breathability alert on Gargani. My entire base is filled up with carbon dioxide. And I am uh, choking everybody out. There's plenty of oxygen coming in, but I had the uh, ethanol distillers up here running, producing carbon dioxide, which was dumping it all right into the base. And before, I had been picking that up down here and getting rid of it and it was enough, but apparently not quite enough. Um, we uh, filled the whole base up. So I cut this off so they're not making carbon dioxide anymore and still pumping out. Hopefully that's enough to get uh, so enough out of here that people can breathe again because I have emergencies over here that I need to deal with on top of it. Now my toilets here aren't working and that's because uh, the polluted water here has built backed up. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's because I've had this off down here way too long. 
And so what I need to do, even though I want to keep working on this, I did get all this vacuumed out. I need to reopen this water purification system uh, right now so that I can uh, start processing water so I can get rid of all that polluted water, which means our toilets will run again. All kinds of problems, just one after another, but we'll get it all sorted out. So I'm going to be honest, I debated for a little while about whether or not to call a little quits on the problems I've been having and roll back and, and fix things from the start. And I thought that it would be better if I just try to figure out how to fix things from here, because I think a lot of times in series, people show you the best outcomes and the, the, the Failed attempts don't get through. So this is definitely a failed attempt. I had a lot of problems. I'm about to fix one, I think. I finally got this coolant line put in, connected to this system. So I have 14 degree super coolant coming through down here. And I'm going to let it run. And we're going to see just how quickly we can get this cooled off. If we can't get this cooled off, we're going to have serious problems because things keep breaking. People get are getting incapacitated and scalded. It's, uh, it's a real problem. Um, but I think that this will help a lot. I'm going to come off this screen for now because it's too lag intensive with all the fluids blowing around. So we have this coming through. Okay, it's about to get to the thing so it's coming in at 14 degrees picking up a bunch of temperature and it's leaving at 23 degrees what we want to see is this this uranium liquid going to cool down fast enough that we can get rid of it um it's it's going to turn let's see uranium will turn back into a solid at 130.9 and it's currently at 134.3 and dropping. So I need to be ready because once it gets cool enough, it's going to turn into a block. But it's going to take a little while. The other thing I, the other like emergency emergency that I've been dealing with is on Gurgani. I have smoked out our entire base. So what I've started building here is I'm building a liquid lock that's going to go on the front of our base here because this is all sealed, this section here. And I have a pump in here that's been pumping out carbon dioxide. It's down to two kilograms per tile. Um, but every time they come in, they let more gas in. And there's so much out here that it's going to take a long time to get that cleared out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to build this. That way that there's a liquid lock to prevent the gas from getting into here. And we can just continue to pump it out until we have a safe place for our duplicates to be able to, to sleep and eat in here. Also, the this high-pressure gas is getting in and causing pop eardrums and all that kind of stuff. So... We're going to finish building this, and then we will pump in some um, crude oil here so that we can seal this up, and that will allow us to pump this room out first before we worry about the rest of the, the base. The rest of the base, frankly, I don't care if it's filled with carbon dioxide. It's not a big deal. Um, I think all of our crops are fine running in carbon dioxide, uh, so it's not like that's going to hurt anything. It's just in here that it's a problem. So we're going to let this finish up while we're finishing up over here. Let's go back to our main colony and check this out. The uranium is down to 133 and it's still dropping. So that's going to cool everything in here down once we get this liquid under control. And then we'll, we'll come up with a plan on fixing all the things once we have it in a safe state. So I'm going to call it an episode right now because I've been recording for a long time and there's a lot going on we didn't get what we set out to do done and frankly there's a lot of problems here too because this is this did not work i'm gonna to have to redesign this whole thing so this is going to take a back burner and we'll get to that when we get to it this is priority number one but we'll start working on this area in earnest in the next episode hope you enjoyed watching and we'll see you in the next one Bye bye